Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are continuing ahead with the set C. We are in chapter two. We covered three questions as a part of our previous tutorial. And now we are talking about the remaining two questions of this chapter, completing the five questions which will be contributing in your examination. Uh, let's get started with the next question here. The question number 12 is the next question for us. A mass market operating software system software product is designed to run on any PC hardware with an 86 family processor. You are running a set of tests to look for a defect related to support of the various PCs that use such a processor and to build confidence that important PC brands will work with. Now, what type of test are you performing? Now, let me just tell you something quickly here before we look into the answering of this question or looking at the options. Uh, this is a typical set which was additionally created by ISTQB and they typically tried putting more complex questions uh, to tell you that don't be under the impression that always the questions will be pretty much straight forward. Sometimes it could be very out of the box as well and uh, we want to make you you know comfortable with those that this could be another expected thing. But just to tell you that this is one of those questions which are not typically asked in the examination. The only reason is as per the syllabus they have not explained what is non-functional testing even with the definition, right? They have not discussed about what is performance testing. They have not discussed about what is processor test. Uh, they have not discussed about portability testing, right? So that certainly makes a quick confusion to any individual that did we cover anything about portability testing, performance testing, so that if a scenario or detail is provided to me in the question, can I pick up the right answer there, right? So this is one among those examples of the set C. Set C has few other questions like this, which is going to talk beyond the syllabus and may not be an appropriate candidate for the examination. So excusing this question, you don't really have to wonder about it. You have to just say, okay, I saw this template example, but all right, that should be fine if I do not look into this as a conf confusion towards the preparation of your examination, okay? Because let me tell you something very straightforward here, that here they're talking about one of the non-functional testing and as per our syllabus, we have only seen the names of the non-functional test, but not even a one-line definition to what each test is responsible for or what's the objective of each non-functional test which they mentioned there right? So you will not be able to answer this question until unless you are extraordinary or you might be working in an industry and you have a pinch of understanding of other non-functional levels, but not as per the syllabus, right? But just to tell you that here, this particular scenario which is given to you is talking about portability testing, where portability testing is all about testing a particular application into different set of environments or different combination of software and hardware and trying to make sure that whether a system can be ported from one platform to another platform, right? And this platform can be also called as environment, which is combination of the software and hardware, including the operating system, right? So this is where uh, this sort of discussion has never happened in our syllabus, but here the right answer is portability test and uh, I don't want to really, uh, you know, tell you or recommend you that you should start digging into such topics or say that should I be preparing on this? No. This set has few questions which are not in our scope. So I'm highlighting that right here. Let's move into the next question, which is question number 13. And here we are talking about during an agile development effort, a product owner discovers a previously unknown regulatory requirement that applies to most of the user stories within a particular epic. The user stories are updated to provide for the necessary changes in the software behavior. The programmers on the team are modifying the code appropriately as a tester on the team what types of tests will you run? Now, 
this is not something which we were just talking about in our previous question. This is appropriately as per our discussion and we have covered this in our syllabus. So don't be under the impression all the time because did this start talking about agile? Did this start talking about epic and user story? Trust me, it has nothing to do with your answer or nothing to do with your question to be understood. If you, even if you skip the initial few lines, right, till the software behavior, it has nothing to do with your knowledge on the chapter two. The main question starts from the programmers on the team are modifying the code appropriately based on the scenario given to you. As a tester on the team, what will you do based on the change? So it's pretty much important for us to understand that I would be making sure that I perform the regression test, which would be making sure that these changes have not impacted the existing, right? Because the system has been built and later the product owner has discovered some of the stories which were not built. So here they're not talking about agile as a question, they're talking about getting the requirements modified after building the application, correct? So once the development, some of the development has complete and you are interfering with the build code once again, and the only thing what you need to do is talking about the, uh, the of course, uh, the testing which will check that these changes do not impact. But there is a slight challenge here further on the options. I see option A says confirmation testing, which is to test the bugs when they are fixed by the developers and you perform retesting or rerun the same test once again to confirm the fix is what you call it as confirmation. B is regression, C is functional, D is change related test, okay? Whereas if I talk about functional tests, most of you think that, oh yeah, of course I have to perform functional testing on this. No, you're talking about modifying few things which are existing. So functional testing is no longer required. You are already stepping into a maintenance testing level, right? And then we say, okay, fine. I'll go with B, regression test. Answer is, is that all you will do? Because there are even the changes being involved. And that change could be due to a fix. Could be, you know, this is more about a fixing, right? User uh, stories which are being updated to provide the necessary changes. So I will not be just standalone limited to regression. I would also do the initial testing or particular retesting for those changes which are being hit. So if I have a particular feature in a particular application which is being modified, I'll start with testing the feature and then I'll go with the regression. So picking up confirmation testing alone or regression testing alone would not be a good idea. Rather, I would say, I will pick up change related test, which is a category covering confirmation and regression both, right? So the right answer here will be D, change related test, because this is a category which includes confirmation and regression both. And of course, both has to be performed here in order to make sure that the changes are effective and do not have a side effect, right? I hope that makes sense to all of you. And that's all from this particular tutorial. Closing on the chapter two team, we'll be getting back to you with chapter three to continue ahead. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.